Hi everyone, I'm Stephanie Bennett with the Long Island Advocate and today I'm going to be interviewing two students of color and one professor of color at Hofstra University to talk about the issues between them and Hofstra's Public Safety Department. So students of color as well as other non-white students have often felt targeted by Hofstra's Public Safety Officers. Just kind of wanted to get your stance on this issue between Public Safety and students of color and is there any other information that you have maybe you or your peers ever had any issues with public safety i can speak on my own personal um issues i guess um i believe this was my freshman or my sophomore year um i was coming out of the student center like cafe um area and I was with someone at the time and I was looking around for him and I ended up going back and I'd already paid for my food. Um, I had my receipt and everything, had my card out as if I had just paid. Um, there was a public safety officer that was in the cafe and the second that I went back in, looked around and then left after I finding my friend outside by, I think it was Sabaro's at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, the public safety officer started screaming at me saying okay well you didn't you didn't you didn't pay you need to come back and pay you need to come back and pay even though i had my receipt and i showed my receipt and very very thankfully one of the women that was doing the checkout at the time was like yeah no she she's already paid um this officer kind of got in my face a little bit i wasn't able to grab his name but it made me feel really really uncomfortable um and furthermore my junior year there was a situation so as a tv film major a lot of times i'm picking up equipment for from the equipment room outside of the school of communication and there's a little tiny driveway in the back that you can drive up real quick according to um the equipment room manager no longer you're not there for any longer than 15 20 minutes maximum usually um and i was loading up some equipment and a p-safe officer came up to me and he got really really close in my face and was kind of just like eyeballing me up and down was like well why what are you doing here why are you here um and my boyfriend who was white he came out and he was he asked if there was a problem the second that my boyfriend was seen it was oh well never mind oh i see you're just dropping off equipment and it came to my attention okay well why am i being questioned as a as a black woman of color and then the second that my white boyfriend is coming into the scene oh well you obviously see the colorism the prejudice in that situation here one of my friends um was hospitalized on campus um and you know, it was very, uh, it was, it was an incredible situation to watch um, because my friend was literally dying and they weren't taking him to the, the hospital. They were like, well, we need to find his identification. We already gave you his identification, but they're just using this as an excuse to search the room because he was a student of color. But public safety stood aside and allowed, you know, NASA PD to go ahead and search the room. Um, it's illegal to do so unless you have permission from the university. When it's a student of color, you're not immediately taking them to a hospital and, you know, doing anything of that nature they didn't even call his parents like what they, they didn't even before like um he had a he had a seizure um and uh, instead of like allowing for emt ems to investigate anything like that they automatically assumed that because he was a student of color it was drug related yeah so they started to search his room to see if they could find any drugs or anything like that public safety in the relationship not just with students of color but also with faculty of color and staff of color is a very interesting conversation and there are documented reports and you know lots of people have talked about their individual experiences with our public safety officers so there absolutely has to be more accountability and more transparency and the accountability cannot be public safety regulating themselves it's the exact same argument that people and communities are having about their police departments within those communities you cannot have oversight internally and expect it to actually be true accountability and oversight. So there definitely has to be some entity that is over public safety and not just the chief of public safety that looks at these reports that analyzes what's there, what is appropriate, um, appropriate force, appropriate, there shouldn't be force anyway, these are students, it's public safety, we're not a public, it's not a police department. Um, that there should be some, when these things do occur, some other entity that oversees whether or not the consequences are appropriate. So yes, there, there's a lot of things, lots of students, I've heard it myself from students, I've heard it from 
um, from faculty members even when public safety does not believe that they're faculty members asking for additional ID, asking for like, even if they're in their offices, asking, you know, to prove that it's their office. And these are things that would not occur to um, with, with, with white members of our community. And we have to acknowledge that there is a problem and continuing to bury our heads in the sand about it isn't the way to actually get it fixed. Mm -hmm. But it is a, the acknowledgement is the first step to, to the fixing and the accountability and transparency. I'm Stephanie Benat with the Long Island Advocate signing off. <laughs>